Hi, folks. Uh, thanks for joining me today, and I uh, hope everybody's having a great first day of Dreamforce. Only about 30 minutes until uh, we all get to go over to the welcome reception and uh, enjoy a few beers and water around the booths and such. And this is my seventh uh, Dreamforce, uh, five as a customer, uh, two as a vendor. And, you know, it's, it's fun every year to just uh, kind of be around with a bunch of like minded folks, talk business, talk pleasure. You know, have some good time. So thank you for your attention, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the little journey we're going to go on here. Uh, I think it's great with the theme of the trailhead and, and journeys and such, because really it's never about one solution. It's about trying to figure out what's the right thing for the end user. And so with that in mind, we're going to talk a little bit about the future of Salesforce integration. Uh, our agenda, we're going to do a brief introduction of, of myself and, and why I'm here. Uh, we're going to talk uh, about some Salesforce integration patterns. Uh, we're going to start with OData, you know, our primary uh, topic for today. And then we're going to get into what's next, as we've called it uh, in the session, the, the OMG. Because there's a lot beyond OData when it comes to visualizing external data within Salesforce. And we're going to look at some of those different options. So uh, we'll go ahead and start here and uh, you know, explain um, you know, what you know, myself, I'm, my name is Casey Clayton. Uh, I'm the cloud real-time specialist with Informatica. Came over as a customer of the product, uh, many years uh, experience as an architect, and prior to that, uh, ASP.NET SQL Server engineer. So kind of come full spectrum in, in looking at the ways that you build tools for sales folks. And, and uh, you know, it's just been a pretty interesting time now, especially with Salesforce, because it gives you a common language to, to share your problems you know, with others. And, uh, and with that in mind, um, you know, where, uh, where Informatica fits in is uh, we, we are the market share leader in Salesforce integration in API calls and number of customers. Um, you know, Informatica has been around for a long time, and Informatica Cloud was, was built to support you know, the needs of, of Salesforce and other cloud customers uh, you know, as they've expanded and moved through their infrastructures. So um, just briefly, it's more than you know, just one product that, that we bring to the table. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide because we're here specifically to talk about application integration or you know, access to data without uh, duplicating data and some of the other elements uh, that are involved in that. And uh, so with that in mind, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started with OData. So you know, as you can see here, you know, not everybody interacts with you know, their, their application data outside of Salesforce, but it's more and more common for that requirement to be a real-time requirement. I need to see the data as, uh, as it exists today and not as it existed yesterday at midnight. And so we're seeing more and more of our customers looking at how you can make this happen. And so we talk about the different data integration patterns um, you know, commonly available within Salesforce. Uh, the first are you know, your standard copy and sync. This is going to push the information into Salesforce. You're going to create records and objects. You, know, you can do it manually through a data loader. Uh, you can have your nightly scheduled batch, you know, move your accounts and contacts between systems. Or you can even do event-driven orchestration. You know, an opportunity is closed one. Something is created in NetSuite. Something is created in SAP. At the moment that it happens, you know, have that record be created. But really what we're going to talk about here is uh, uh, request and response patterns, or the ability to get access to the data without replicating the data. And this is really where OData and Salesforce Connect and some of the other you know, technologies that you've been going to hear about all week really come together. And so um, you know, this real-time access to external data is going to be important for, for many reasons, you know, potentially because it could save you money on storage costs. And we'll talk about um, you know, why you might want to have your data in Salesforce, or perhaps why not? This is a pretty common question, you know, working in the data integration industry, I, it comes up quite a bit. You know, why do I need to have my data in Salesforce? Is it, can I leave it elsewhere? Or do I have to have it there for everybody who can see it? And uh, I think there's a couple rules of thumb. You know, it's going to vary from use case to use case. But it's absolutely essential to copy the data into Salesforce when it's required by, you know, workflow, assignment rules, or other logic, or if, or if you're planning on running reports uh, out of Salesforce on the data. But if the data is there just so folks can see it, but it's changing constantly, or you have a large amount of data that you want to archive but still have access to, then you know, these are you know, the most common reasons that people are looking to external data sources, external objects, um, you know, which leads us uh, to OData. So 
Um, I mean, you know, the folks that are here today, I, you know, I mean, definitely the term OData has become familiar, you know, and it's, and it's generally within the context of, of a Salesforce or Lightning Connect. And we'll, we'll talk about how easy it is to get your database sources turned into OData initially, and then what else you can do with some of this real-time connectivity to the database from there. So uh, our obligatory OData overview. Uh, for those, you know, most of the folks probably in this room are well aware, but it's a web service. OData is a web service that allows you to take a relational data source, like a database, you're, you know, you're behind the, uh, pr the firewall, Oracle database, MySQL, uh, or you know, other types of applications. But generally speaking, it's about taking uh, information you store offline in a database and turning it into a web service. And the great thing about OData is it's got the description of the data built into the web service itself. So it's, you don't need to know specifically um, you know, what a system has within it to be able to get a description of all the fields and, and, and get that data back. So uh, an OData endpoint will allow you to call over the web um, and you know, return information from that database, potentially update it, uh, read, write. And, and we see this most commonly um, with using uh, OData to expose your database tables to other applications, uh, Office 365, Salesforce, OData becomes a very common standard uh, for accessing these things without writing code. And so why is it a hot topic here? Of course, uh, because Salesforce Connect. It becomes it's one of the easiest ways to expose uh, external data in Salesforce to a Salesforce user. And uh, that's the quick demo that we're going to actually go through right now, is taking a database source, generating an OData URL from that database source, creating an external data source in Salesforce, and then putting that external object-related list uh, onto your page layout. So just so you can see what we're working with, we're going to use a MySQL uh, database that's actually, you know, for the intents and purposes of this discussion, behind the firewall. So we're going to use our secure agent technology to get behind the firewall to, to get access to this database. We're going to publish it as an OData endpoint that we're going to put into Salesforce, and then we're going to visualize this data uh, on the record. And we'll, we'll be able to do this in just a couple of minutes. So I'm going to hop out, and at this point, I'm going to go into demo mode, and we're going to go ahead and uh, you can see here that we're logged uh, into Salesforce. Uh, you know, not quite winter 17 yet on this particular org, but should look familiar to all. And where I'm going to go is part of uh, you know, what we do with the Informatica Cloud Real-Time is there's a managed package component that gives you access to your connections and your designer you know, within Salesforce uh, as a custom tab. So this, this little square that you're seeing here is coming from our designer, but it's hosted within Salesforce. It uses your session IDs so, and uh, establishes an SSO connection. And what we're going to do with this thing is we're going to go and we're going to take a look at uh, a connection that we've stood up to a SQL server. So here it is behind the scenes. I've kind of terminaled into this box. Uh, I've got a SQL server running. It's got a few tables on it. Uh, the table that we're going to be interested in here is uh, what I call the VIN data. You know, it's got a vehicle identification number, uh, year, make, and model. It's a, it's a good example of a unique primary key, and we'll, we'll use that this example uh, for for the O data and and beyond. So we want to expose this information that lives in this database to an end user within Salesforce, and so. Step one, uh, a lot of folks would be familiar with JDBC. You know, uh, all you need to make this real-time connection happen is the JDBC connection URL. And by publishing the connection to the database, it will actually just go and grab all your metadata. Similar, you know, you've seen these things in, in similar circumstances. You see all the different fields that you get back. But um, you know, more importantly, not only do we have this connection to the real-time data, where you can see and preview some of it, but we're able to take this connection and say that we would like to make it OData enabled. So as simple as that, I hit the radio button over to yes. Now I'm going to save and publish this connection. Now what publishing this connection is doing is it's actually creating an endpoint specific to you, secured to your user within the cloud. And we can actually go and find that URL right here. So, so just like that, we've turned MySQL uh, into OData. And it'll work for you know, any of your standard relational database sources. But so what do I do with this URL? Um, you, know, you could drop it into a browser. You could feed it to Office 365. But of course, we're here at Dreamforce. So we want to see exactly what this might look like uh, on my page layouts. So you know, here's a standard account page layout as, as exists today. And so I'm going to go into Setup, into our Setup Home. 
and I'm going to look for something called an external data source. Uh, external data sources, um, you know, you can connect to other Salesforce orgs, you can connect to these OData endpoints as we're about to hear, and this is where you would define that connection with a new external data source. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this one Dreamforce 16. Uh, the type is going to be, uh, in our case, OData 4.0. We support read and write to the database tables using OData 4.0. We're going to paste the URL that we were given right in this little box here. And then we just need to uh, provide a uh, username and password uh, in order to get into the system. So we've got an API user that we've set up that we share for this. And uh, we'll just go ahead and put in the credentials and save. So at this point, to make sure that you got the connection right, there's the validate and sync option. So you hit validate and sync. It's going to reach out to that database, you know, through the firewall, to the secure agent, to the database, and bring back the list of tables that we can now expose to our end users. So you know, there, there's that same list of tables that we saw over here in MySQL, now visible to us and selectable here within Salesforce. So we'll go ahead and select VIN data. That's the one that we're interested in. And we'll hit this sync button. So at this point, we've actually created um, what Salesforce calls an external object. It's, it's you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, an object. It's got IDs. It can be related to your standard uh, you know, primary or custom objects. But the data doesn't actually live in Salesforce. It's getting queried in real time whenever you need it and whenever you want to display it um, upon the page. So here's our external object that we've created, VIN data. If we want to dig in, perhaps a little bit further and say, you know what, let's go ahead and make sure that we can relate this to the account. So just like you would you know, create a custom field and a relationship for any other object, we're going to set up a lookup relationship. This is going to be related to account. And then um, we'll just call, call this one account. And then what it's asking for here is the external column name, or it's actually basically the name of the, the column in the database that has your key value. So in this case, we happen to have Salesforce IDs in this database, but it's not necessary. You could use any unique value on this record to match up against a record in Salesforce and create this relationship. So we're going to go ahead and here, and we're just going to put in related account and hit next. Uh, you know, your standard adding uh, field and related lists walkthrough. It's going to go and uh, you know, create its own external object. But really what we want to see is how this is going to appear uh, to our end users on the account. And it's going to automatically add it to the account page layout, uh, which is nice. So we should just be able to hit Save here. And then from my end user's perspective, go back to an account, uh, drill into this account. And there's uh, you know, our related list. Now, sometimes, obviously, it might need a little bit of cleanup to get some better data here. So, you know, as, as you all know, we can go in and edit the page. And uh, we're familiar with the Lightning App Builder, but of course, at the current time, uh, these related lists are controlled by the good old fashioned page layout editor that we've uh, come to know and love over many years. And uh, this is where you would actually edit the fields that are visible in your related list, just in case you wanted to clean that up. So we come in here and we say, all right, these are the database fields that are available to me. I want to go ahead and see the VIN and then maybe the year, make, model, and mileage. You know, we don't necessarily need that display URL. We'll just use the default sort. OK. Save. And then let's go back and take a look at our data. Save here, go back. Um, and uh, just to make sure, you know, in a lightning experience, sometimes things get cached, so it never uh, hurts to give it a little extra refresh when you're making change to the page layouts. And so we can come down, we could take a look, and uh, there's our external database data that we've brought in. So, you know, this is, these are all particular records that are related to this account by that external field, and those are the only ones that are visible here. So you know, it's really not 
you know, in, at the end of the day, as long as you can get this OData URL, Salesforce, you know, makes this part easy. So step one is getting the real-time connection to the database, exposing that as an OData URL. But once you've got this real-time connection, you know, what else could you potentially do with it? So that's what we're going to, uh, to move on. Because external data objects are a start, but you know, your page layouts can get cluttered with related lists. You just keep adding more and more data to the page. You train half the people that they need to look here every time. You train half the people that they need to disregard it entirely, because you know, you're not going to create new uh, record types and profiles for every single person just so they see what they want to see. At the end of the day, it's a lot of data. Um, and, you, and they're really not directed about how to use the, the data in the context of a business process. Kind of an internal struggle you know, uh, within Salesforce. But if we need to use this external data uh, to say, rather than just have it visible as a related list, let's say we actually have a custom object that we are maintaining that we actually populate with data from a database, and maybe from a web service or from another source. So you know, external objects don't necessarily make sense there. Uh, OData cannot be you know, necessarily easily combined with, with other data sources. It's meant to represent that database table or relational source um, that you've tied it to. And, and of course, you know, there's Apex required if you want to try to do the same thing with, uh, with REST and, and SOAP-based uh, APIs. So, oh. <laughs> All right, really what it's about, you know, not just displaying the external data, but really giving the users the opportunity to interact with it in, in the context of a business process. And so that's what we're going to get into next, is, is really what real-time cloud application integration can deliver. Um, it's about getting real-time data for Salesforce end users. And so what it looks like is a, is a business subject matter expert can create a, a simple process guide to walk a user step-by-step -step through a system-spanning business process. So if they have some information that's available to them in Salesforce, and then they have to pull some information from a database, and then have to pull some information from the web service, the ability to keep them within that same page without code is uh, you know, a uniquely powerful uh, situation that you could be in. So what I wanted to walk through is not only these process guides, but the codeless connectors that can give you interactive access to REST and SOAP-based APIs and database sources uh, without the APEX. Um, these are visual force-based components that actually display on page layouts and lightning classic and, and mobile devices. And, and they can be shown and hidden to Salesforce users uh, using any value of the field on the record. And I, and I think you'll see uh, what I'm getting at here in a little bit. What I want to show you is a different way to think about displaying external data uh, to your end users and having a certain amount of control over it because ultimately all the metadata for these processes and guides uh, are stored in Informatica Cloud. All right. So permit me, if you will, to describe a scenario. Um, our customer or a customer's calling us to notify us that they've acquired a new vehicle and they want to go ahead and uh, you know, register that, that vehicle with us. I mean, we could be an insurance company or we actually um, had a scenario recently where we're working with a company that was uh, basically set up to be a bridge. Uh, they, they, you know, they, uh, there, there was a bridge that was built in Canada. They set up a company to uh, oversee it, and they had three use cases. Uh, one was customer uh, wants to pay their bill. Uh, the other one is customer has a complaint about the bill, and the third one was uh, dr truck drives across bridge. And I'm like, you know, these are the kind of, uh, you know, things that people are trying to solve in Salesforce today. And to be able to do these sorts of processes within a single designer, I think, can become pretty powerful. It was really my dream IoT use case, truck drive across bridge case in Salesforce. So it was, it was fun to work on. And we, can, and we can talk about some of those orchestration elements. But, uh, but I digress. Our, our company here, we, uh, we store the information about a vehicle in a custom object that we relate to the account. Because it has information that we're pulling from multiple sources, as well as actually from the customer that we're going to be on the phone with. So the data sources in this particular business process are going to be our customer on the phone. They're going to be that MySQL database that we connected to earlier and exposed as an OData endpoint. And then we're also going to throw a, a call out to a REST API uh, into, the, into the process. So from the business perspective, we're going to start from the account record. Um, they get the vehicle identification number from the customer. Uh, we will look up the year, make, and model from the database. Uh, we'll get the city mileage and highway mileage from Edmonds. 
Uh, we'll collect the license plate registration from the customer, and at the end of the day, we're going to end up with an account record. And rather than just kind of jumping in and, and saying, oh, look how great this looks when it's completed, we're going to build it uh, live to show you an example of, of, of these things and, uh, and how process, a guided process orchestration could potentially change the way that your Salesforce users um, are interacting with external data. So um, if you will, I'm going to go back and we're going to look at this account page. And um, you can see that we've got a number of different components here. Now, one of the tabs that I have available is, is what we call uh, or what we're calling here are real-time guides. And so this component section that actually um, loads up here contains a number of business process you know, specific, um, what we call guides. They'll take an end user step-by-step -step through adding a vehicle to account or a financial request process or reaching out to an external system, keeping them you know, within this window the entire time. So you have ultimately um, an end user experience um, that taps into the data without necessarily knowing where the data resides. Um, but let's go ahead and get into the guide designer, because we talked about a process, and I want to show you how we build it. And I've got only a couple minutes left here. So there's the back into the same place that you saw us publish the real-time connection is also where we can create these new process guides. So if I come in here and say I want to create a new guide, and this is going to be uh, my add car guide, and then I'm going to tell the system that I want this to appear on a Salesforce account. So we can say Salesforce and you know, any of the objects. It doesn't have to be a standard object. You can have them for custom objects. But this is where the guide is going to appear. And this is going to be a guide to add vehicle record in Salesforce using DB info as well as data from Edmunds.com. We'll give us a little tag to keep track. And then all we need to do to set this process up is say that we're going to collect a little bit of input from the end user. We're going to say, hey, I want to see your new VIN. And then also, we're going to make a connection to our database. And so it's as simple as saying, hey, I've got this database table that I'm calling DB VIN data. But the type is going to be an object. And all the different database connections and APIs that we've published over time are available here. So in this case, we just want to connect to the VIN data. And we're going to be able to interact with that within the course of our process. So getting started, we can go into our palette and drag a step on and then begin actually to uh, ask the customer uh, a few questions. So we can say, welcome to the Add Vehicle Guide. Please enter your uh, customer VIN or click View VIN List. So I'm just going to drop a little field here, our customer VIN that we are going to, or rather new VIN. That's going to be available here. And then we're just going to put our options saying enter VIN or view list. So as you're creating this process, as a business person might describe it to you, the flow begins to develop. So if we're going down this road to view the VIN list, and we want to be able to get that information from the database, it's as simple as just dropping the field on to my, my interface here and saying, I want to see the following fields. You know you're going in the right direction when you start to see database fields here within Salesforce. So we can say, I want to see the VIN number, the uh, year, make, and model. And then we're going to actually just use a, a query to pull that information in. And we'll just say select a VIN. Now, if they provided the VIN, we can just as simply um, populate the query. and say, hey, I want to get it where the VIN equals whatever value that the person just provided to me, so that new VIN. And so that's all well and good. I mean, it seems like a lot of effort maybe just to show a row in a database when you can do O data, right? But let's start to build this out into a process and say, OK, we've got this database data. Let's go ahead and show it to the user. 
And so, you know, just as you could show any field that's available on the account record that you're looking at currently or related Salesforce object, we've got all of our database fields available. So here's our DB Vin data. I want to sh show the year. I want to show the make and the model. So this is all information directly from the database. We are not copying this into Salesforce. We're streaming it live to the screen of the user within this widget, within this component within Salesforce. And so if I could come in, and so there's make, model, and year. And then if I want to be able to edit this information, just like our OData endpoint allows read-write, we could allow our users to actually update that information within the database here so they can, you know, the, they can make a correction, like, say, get the new mileage from the end user and go ahead and populate that. And we'll just give these some prompts and say, well, this is the year, this is the make, this is the model. You know, we can make it pretty. We can even you know, put some images here. This actually has styles that are imported from Lightning Connect as well. We use their style sheet. So when you render it or if you want to view the layout, you can see that, uh, oh, let me, here we go. Oop, I got to finish. <laughs> All right. And now in our next step, we're going to make a web service call. So, you know, we thought that getting to a database was relatively simple. Same token, we're going to make a call out to the admins.com web service. So here's uh, our admins.com. We're going to get the vehicle by VIN. We're going to use the same value that we've been using all along from the database to actually get this information from the web service. Now, when you look at this web service, you can see that it's going to expect in this vehicle ID, and it's actually going to return back these fields. Now, you do this within the tool with what we call a service connector. Service connectors allow you to configure um, your payloads for getting at you know, just about any REST or SOAP API out there and to do so in a code-free fashion. So you can simulate a web service call. You can see that you're going to get this entire set of data back. And then you say, hey, my business users want to know about the city and the highway and the class. And so you just specify you want those properties off the output. And then we're able to utilize that within the context um, of our process. So if I can come in here and say display web service information, And so that, you know, there's the MPG city. Now let's say, you know, as is common, the business didn't specify every single field that they might possibly need. They gave you the six and you went ahead to build, but you have this whole set of data that's coming back in the payload. And so we can actually return uh, the entire object. Um, and if somebody, you know, if a person understands the schema, they could actually go in and say, hey, I want to look for the Edmunds vehicle uh, and I want to get in the mileage and I want to go highway. So the ability to create these objects from the payloads that you know, uh, somebody that understands the schema can use and show to a Salesforce user can be uh, pretty powerful. So let's just go ahead and say MPG Highway. Review web service info. And then last but not least, we're going to create that vehicle record. So we're going to say that this is going to create. We're going to select our object type. Now you see we've got a whole list of database connections or Salesforce connections, different Salesforce orgs. You can specify record creation in other orgs without any challenge using the same kind of uh, connection. But we're going to create a Salesforce vehicle. And we're going to build it up using the data that we've collected from you know, not only the end user, but also the various systems. So we're going to say here's our year, make, model, and then also our city and highway mileage. And then, of course, we need to get the registration and license plate. These are all the fields that exist you know, on this object. And so we're going to say these are going to come from our database. My DB Vin data year. DB Vin data. And so you can see how this is different from an external object because we're using the, the data to create our own custom object that we're combining you know, with input that uh, the end user is providing. And so if I can just, uh, and we'll go, here's my VIN data and model. 
And then we'll collect these from our web service. So if I just search for Edmonds, yeah, there's the Edmonds MPG City. There's our Edmonds MPG Highway. And then we're going to collect these from the screen. Remember, there's a user here involved. This isn't just an automated process. We've got somebody on the phone. So I just say, I want to collect these two values from the screen. And if I go over to this input screen tab, it's going to remind me what I've asked for. So we'll just say, enter DMV information and license plate, registration state. Now we could uh, drop a little uh, image in here for good measure. And like that, that's, that's the end of our process. Let's just take our user to the vehicle record that they've created using the, the, the data from those external systems. So we're just going to say refresh and go to an object that didn't even exist at the beginning of the process. We're going to go to created vehicle record. Yeah. So this is all well and good. We've, we've created this, right? We can, pub by publishing the metadata, this guide actually would become available within uh, the production org. It, that's, that little space that you saw there is controlled by which guides you, you show and hide and publish for various reasons. So if I come in here and I go to my real-time guide section now, this new process that I just released is available here. So, I mean, if you've got, uh, you know, a department within your company that has a pilot that needs to go out next week, you could drop a little process guide in here without a Salesforce release and allow them to step through and do whatever it is they need to do, even reach out to other systems. But let's go ahead and walk through what we built just so you can see that it works. And we're going to go ahead and run our add car guide. So here's the welcome to the add vehicle guide, uh, enter customer VIN or view list. I'm going to say let's view the list. So this is going to make a real-time query out to that same database that you saw before. We can maybe search and filter within. Let's say that they have a Nissan. Yeah, there we go, Nissan Pathfinder. So we'll select that information from the database. Now we're going to make that web service call. We're going to get that information back from you know, the admins.com web service. Oh, looks like I didn't finish this one out. There's our 13 miles per gallon city. Um, and then the highway information. And then last but not least, some information from the end user. I love SFDC and the state of California. I think our timing is good because I'm just about out, but we have our new vehicle record. Oh, this, is, this one's not me. <laughs> this is uh, uh, apparently lightning uh, in their winter 16. But uh, I do want to show you that vehicle record that we've created. So there it is. So there's the MPG City and Highway from the web service. There's the information that we got from the database, you know, the vehicle identification number, registration state, and license plate. So yeah, I appreciate your time. I know it's just about, uh, you know, just to wrap up and what some of your next steps are. You can come and visit us here in the dev zone. I'm going to be available. Uh, we're going to have some folks also over in the main booth and uh, check out our other sessions as they're available. Uh, I appreciate your time and have a great Dreamforce.